Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mastermind Masterclass. My name is Kate Osterley. I'm a part of the marketing team here at Genomenon. And thank you so much for taking the time to join us today to learn about the latest advancement to Mastermind, copy number variation, or CNVs. Some of the features you'll see in today's Masterclass, including CNV search, are only available in the professional version. And the great news is that anyone who has a Mastermind Basic account and registered for today's Masterclass with the same email is getting a free two-week upgrade to Professional Edition. So you'll be able to try CNV Search and the other great pro features for yourself. We're going to share more with you about that later, including what to do if you registered for this Masterclass with a different email. So first, for some housekeeping. You can submit questions in the question box at any time, and at the end of the presentation, we'll have some Q&A with our speakers. Today's masterclass is being recorded, and we'll have this recording uh, up on our website by the end of today, and we'll also send you a link in an email with the recording and the Q&A transcript, and that will help answer any of the questions that we might not get uh, to time to the end of the day. So, all right, let's get started. Once again, we've gathered our two amazing founders to discuss Mastermind in depth with you. Let's say hello to our Chief Science Officer, Dr. Mark Keel, and Chief Technology Officer, Steve Schwartz. Welcome. Now, if you've joined us for other masterclasses, you'll know that we like to keep these events pretty casual, and we'll get to know um, more about our founders founders with an icebreaker question. And so I asked the guys, what was the first car that they ever owned? So I thought that was a good way to get to know something different about them. Uh, Mark, you said that you and your twin brother saved up for five years to buy a Pontiac Grand Dam, which is super cool. Those were great cars. And Steve also saved up a whole summer so that he could buy a Ford Fiesta, which he lovingly named La Fiesta, which is quite appropriate. So both good cars, guys, and I love knowing that new little tidbit about you both. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ready with our presentation. Mark, I'm going to hand it over to you. Great. Uh, Kate, I think you have control of the slide still, so um, we can move to the next slide where I'll just uh, clarify for those of you who aren't familiar that Mastermind is a genomic database of information in the empirical literature. It is the most comprehensive source of such information, comprising 30 million titles and abstracts, as well as nearly 8 million full text articles, thoroughly indexed for a variety of different genetic uh, keywords, including uh, over 2 million at this point supplemental data sets. Looking across the whole human genome, every genetic variant ever described and how those genetic variants associate with any human disease, phenotype or any therapy used to treat those entities. And the next slide, Kate, will, will illustrate how we uh, attack this problem of organizing all this information, which is to say finding and connecting those genomic concepts from that vast store of, of information in the medical literature. We, we approach this in two ways and deliver on the value in, in those two ways as well. The first is by organizing that evidence, which is to say what most of you when you're looking in the user interface do is to ask a specific question and retrieve the evidence that addresses that specific question. The most simple example would be, I have a genetic variant in my patient and I'd like to query Mastermind to find any of the articles that have previously cited that variant and understand what to do with that information for my patient. And understanding what to do with that information comes in the form of uncovering those genetic and genomic associations that I alluded to on the previous slide, which is to say how my patient's genetic variant has previously been associated with diseases, phenotypes, drugs, and related clinical actionabilities. The next slide will reify some of those genomic concepts and how they may be associated together and how Mastermind can uncover those genomic associations. So obviously the substance of this uh, masterclass today is to proudly announce that uh, in response to a lot of uh, positive user feedback about the benefits of Mastermind and the value 
that would be afforded if copy number variant or C and V search were possible. We've modified our hexagon over there on the left to become a heptagon by including an additional node in the upper right, which is to say now Mastermind allows users to search for and uncover associations with CMVs and any one of those other entities that were uh, part of our, our toolkit before. So CMVs and how they associate with disease, how they associate with genetic uh, uh, um, causation in the form of clinical phenotypes, and then further, how any of the treatment information may inform uh, diagnostic and therapeutic strategies for patients with CMVs. So this is another facet in Mastermind's armamentarium that helps our software users and our, our pharma clients alike better understand the genetic associations underlying their disease. So the next slide, um, I'll, I'll describe some of the enhanced capability that Genomenon offers for our pharma clients, which is to say, being able to answer at a very large scale any questions that they have around genetic causation and its interaction with clinical disease as well as therapeutic intervention. And this now, as I say, we're proud to announce, will also include copy number variants, including structural alterations such as gene fusion events. So just to clarify, if, if those of you on the, uh, in the audience aren't familiar, genomic just pardon me, comprehensive genomic landscapes are what Genomenon is able to deliver by addressing focused questions about a specific disease to uncover all of the genes and all of their associated variants and how they interact with that disease, either through mechanism of action, causation of that disease, as well as various clinical parameters such as age of onset, disease severity, et cetera. So what a, a comprehensive genomic landscape looks like is for any of those genes that are associated with the disease or a biological phenomena of interest, every single one of those genetic variants is curated according to clinical standard guidelines such as ACMG and AMP to provide key insight into the clinical studies and functional studies that help interpret the meaningfulness of every one of those variants. And with that is included any relevant treatment information and clinical trial information, and as ever, with all of the supporting scientific evidence necessary to justify the scientific assertions that are made in that landscape. It's all very succinctly summarized for immediate actionability, but allows users to go into deep granularity with any specific uh, entity so that you can trust but verify the work that Genomenon puts together into these landscapes. And then the last thing I'll say before I turn it over to Steve for some introductory remarks about the copy number variant is that all of this information is kept up to date and, and can be updated with quarterly um, updates providing any new findings that have been published since the last submission of our data. So with that, I'll turn uh, the, the spotlight over to my colleague, Steve Schwartz, our CTO, be, uh, who will give an overview of the copy number variant work that he and his development team have been working on for the better part of the last quarter. And then I'll, I'll um, await showcasing several use case examples in a live demo here when Steve is finished. So Steve, let me turn off my video and pass it over to you. Awesome, Thank you. thanks, Mark. So uh, in building CNV support within Mastermind, there's really two challenges that we face and really two challenges that, that uh, we, we face always with our company. The first of which I think is the challenge that, that people um, are, are most aware of or mostly assume, which is the challenge of finding these concepts in the evidence, in the medical literature. Um, so I'll, I'll address that one first. Uh, as you can probably guess, the difficulty with C and V nomenclature that's especially difficult compared to several of the other genomic concepts uh, in our heptagon that Mark showed, the genes, variants, diseases, phenotypes, therapies, and category keywords, um, the additional uh, difficulty with C and Vs is the heterogeneity of the uh, descriptions or nomenclatures that authors can use to describe C and Vs in the literature, in the articles. Um, these are just a few of them by cytogenetic band, ISC and karyotype notation, genomic coordinates, uh, genes and exons. 
these are several of the ones that we had to grapple with when um, incorporating CNVs into our genomic language processing. Um, genes and exons is the one that's probably most like uh, um, natural language, so understanding uh, citations in the literature for descriptions like um, uh, deletion of EGFR exon 3 or uh, uh, things like that. So this obviously is something that we've done. Uh, and, and we've indexed the literature now with our updated genomic language processing that includes all of these nomenclatures plus more for CNVs. Um, and then that takes us to the second challenge that we had on the next slide, um, which is, again, the other challenge that we're often uh, facing that I think um, it tends to be pretty transparent to most uh, users of, of the platform, which is, once we've identified the, the concepts in the evidence, in the literature, how do we then make that available to people using the software? So it's actually almost a mirror of the same challenge because in the same way that authors can describe any of these concepts in very different ways using different nomenclatures, um, users can do the same when they go to Mastermind and type in what they're looking for. So part of what we do, in addition to just identifying what's in the literature, what it has been described by authors and in past studies, is normalizing the data in a way that we can then take whatever the user describes and normalize that as well so that they meet in the middle with the, the purpose or the goal being to show you everything relevant to your search regardless and irrespective of how you described what you're looking for and how the authors may have described what they found. Um, so we have to normalize both halves. We have to normalize what authors said and we have to normalize what users uh, are entering into the site. And then that's how we marry the two results to ensure that you're always getting uh, the, the maximally sensitive and optimally sp uh, specific results for whatever the search is that you're doing. So if you search for a variant by cDNA nomenclature, you'll see citations where the author described the same variant in protein nomenclature. Or if you describe a variant in genomic coordinates, you'll see citations where the authors describe the same variants with cDNA nomenclature, or in this case, you might describe uh, uh, what you're looking for based on genes and exons. An author may have described it using karyotype notation. And so we uh, uh, strive to make the way that you search for something um, irrelevant so that you can always see the, the best and, and right results. So one of the differences here between how we treat C and V results in Mastermind versus how we treat, say, variant results, which you uh, may be familiar with if you've used Mastermind before, is that when you do a variant search, we show you all of the literature that specifically cites your variant. Again, that's irrespective of nomenclature used, but it's still the results that cite the variant that you searched. We also will show you in the left pane all of the variants in the gene uh, in which your, your variant exists so that you can see if there's anything else that's close by if you want to start expanding your search. Um, with C and Vs, because we're dealing with much larger structural alterations, you, you may be describing or looking for a C and V that is tens or even hundreds of millions of base pairs long. And so the question becomes, what are the chances that any literature has ever cited this exact C and V, starting at this position, ending at this position with this effect, whether it's a deletion or a, an insertion or amplification? Um, the question is, you know, when you're, you're dealing with such a large CNV, what are the chances that anything has cited that particular CNV? More, moreover, when you're searching CNVs, often the effect is not necessarily the entire CNV exactly as it exists that you're searching for. The effect that you're looking for often lies somewhere in the CNV. Maybe it's a specific gene that lies within the, the deletion. Um, the, the um, deleted region of the chromosome. And so for C and V results, rather than by default showing you citations for just your C and V exactly, uh, we actually show you the results for any overlapping C and V that we've found. And so this slide shows 
the way that uh, we're, we're categorizing the different CNVs that we return as a result of the CNV that you searched for. So we will return article results which include contain C, uh, CNVs, um, so CNVs that are smaller and lie somewhere within your search CNV. Uh, of, of course, the exact CNV, and if any results for that exist, we prioritize those at the top of the list. Um, we also include articles citing surrounding CNVs that are larger than your CNV and surround it, as well as any intersecting CNVs. Um, so if we go to the next slide, I can give you a quick overview of the, the different elements of the user interface for CNVs, um, which will become more apparent when I then turn it over to Mark to uh, demo this functionality. Um, so I know the screenshot's a little small, um, I'll, I'll tell you what the, the small parts say, and then you'll see them much better in Mark's demo uh, anyway. So when you do a search for a CNV, again, whatever nomenclature you search by, and you can search by any of the nomenclatures that were shown two slides ago, um, the ISCN, uh, genomic coordinates, gene and exon, and there's another one I'm, I'm forgetting. There's a, the first bullet point. Um, there's several ways that you can search for those genomic uh, uh, CNVs. We normalize whatever you search for to genomic coordinates. Um, then we, again, we once you do this search, we're showing by default all articles from overlapping, any overlapping CNVs. If there are any articles that cite your exact CNV, start in position and effect, um, we do prioritize those at the top and put a little bullseye or target icon next to them to indicate that it's an exact match. Um, that actually does happen probably more often than, than you would necessarily think by a, a random chance alone, simply due to deterministic factors such as uh, you know, resolution of assays that you're using to produce the CNVs that you're looking for, um, the, the frequency of descriptions based on different nomenclatures such as uh, cytogenetic band, that's the one I was missing, um, where CNVs may tend to be described uh, given the, the start and end positions of the bounds of a cytogenetic band. And so depending on where your CNV is coming from, there might be a higher than, than usual chance of actually having exact matches cited in the literature. So if those exist, again, they'll be at the top, they'll have this target or bullseye icon. Just as with the rest of Mastermind, you can click each article and see the actual uh, sentence fragments that cite your CNV. You can see what language the author used what we norm and what we normalized it to. Um, then over here, uh, like I said, we're showing you all the articles for any overlapping CNVs. So over in the left pane, we're showing you how many overlapping CNVs there were and listing them out here. We're also telling you how many genes are overlapping the CNV that you searched for. So in this case, we have a CNV that contains 25 overlapping genes and overlaps 224 CNVs cited in the medical literature. And again, those are listed here. Um, we tell you what type of effect, whether it was an amplification or deletion, what chromosome each one was in, the start and end position, the length of the CNV. We give you the type of overlap, again, contained, uh, exact, contained, intersecting, and surrounding. Um, we tell you a, a more um, uh, a human readable description of the CNV here, uh, and then a list of the genes that intersect e or uh, overlap each CNV. If there's one gene, we tell you what it is. If there's more, we tell you how many, and give you a little link that you can click to drop down a box that shows you all of the CNVs, and then the total number of article citations for each CNV in the list. Um, and then this diagram here is our CNV gene citation diagram. So what's, what this is doing is it's taking the 25 overlapping genes of your CNV and it's plotting them based on their start position within the CNV that you search. So the, the diagram starts at the start position of your search CNV, it ends at the end position of your search CNV, and then it plots the 25 genes based on their start position. Then the y-axis here is plotting the number of article citations uh, um, for CNVs overlapping that gene. So again, it takes all of the overlapping CNVs here, and for these 25 genes, it's adding 308 articles uh, to each of the 25 genes. So that will be your baseline because it's based on 
this cited C and V, however many articles it has, each gene that it overlaps gets that many article citations added to the bar. And then it looks at all of the other overlapping C and Vs. It looks at their genes and adds their citations to each of their genes and then finds the intersection between the genes that those C and Vs overlap and this one and plots them. So this one is what it's showing you is that given all of the overlapping CNVs cited in the literature, there is a hot spot of, of overlap on this gene, which I happen to remember in this case is EGFR, which you can then use to further filter down the articles. So the only other thing I'll mention um, to sort of introduce Mark's dem uh, demos is you can also filter down results based on things like phenotype or disease, just as you can with uh, other mastermind searches by adding them to the search bar here. Um, you can see related genes to your CNV. Um, and if you select a gene, you can also see related diseases to that gene CNV combination. Um, so, oh, and the last thing I'll say is uh, up here, we have a filter by gene field for this overlapping CNV list. So you can type one or more genes here and it will dynamically filter this overlapping CNV list down uh, by the CNVs that include that one or more genes that you type into the filter here. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Mark for uh, a, a live demonstration of the CNV search. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. As, as you can tell, we're, we're fairly excited about this new release because it offers an unprecedented capability of searching for contained, exact, and overlapping CNVs, which up until this point had been an impossibility using standard search techniques such as PubMed and Google Scholar, as well as um, being a significant challenge for cytogeneticists and uh, genetic counselors and variant scientists alike because there's very important information for those smaller, exact, and large CNVs in your search. And what I want to do is build on what Steve just described by walking through seven specific use case examples that uh, run the gamut from the types of searches that Steve described as well as exemplify some of the value that Mastermind's new CNV search capability can afford. So um, the first search example, I'll start off slow and I'll build, <laughs> I'll build this, the, the drama toward the end here, but the first search example will be a straightforward examination of all of the copy number variants, small and large, that involve the EGFR gene. So you'll note that I start free text typing with you know, English language, Dell EGFR, and there's myriad of different ways that you can perform the search, many of which I'll exemplify. This is one of the most straightforward, is just Dell of any gene. You'll notice in the dropdown, just like Mastermind does for gene names and variant mentions, we, we afford a dropdown prompt that, as Steve said, normalizes your search to genomic coordinates. When I engage that and then execute the search, you'll be taken to the Mastermind detail page, which will showcase, as Steve described, the gene that's involved, which in this case is a singular gene covering this range, as well as all of the different overlapping CMVs that attend this search and the number of articles that mention these CMVs altogether. For this search, what I wanna to showcase to you is this pane here where the CNVs are all listed. They're listed by default in descending order of the number of articles that cite each of them. So the exact match EGFR deletion is mentioned in uh, nearly 1800 references as the most frequently cited within this region. And what I wanna draw your attention to for this first example is your ability to sort by position. And when I sort by position, you'll notice that all of the different exon deletions, the various single exon deletions, as well as ranges of deletions in EGFR are presented here in their chromosomal order. And you can make quick reference to this column here, which illustrates how widely cited each of those individual CNVs are. Re reminder here that we have searched on deletion of EGFR, and so these exon deletions are now all contained within the original CNV search window, which was the entire EGFR gene. 
So if I just scroll down here, I can see all of the various deletions in the EGFR gene, large and small. And I want to draw your attention to one in particular. Many of you are undoubtedly familiar with EGFR deletions exon 19, 20, and 21 as being associated with specific types of cancer, including lung cancer. However, when I was um, determining what searches to perform for the webinar this morning, I wasn't aware of EGFR exons 2 to 7 deletions, let alone how, how commonly they're represented in the literature uh, reflected here in this 226 number. So I'm interested in exploring that further. And in, in clicking on that, what, I, what you'll notice is that we're moving from an overlapping CNV window to now an exact CNV, which is to say we're specifically focused on EGFR exons 2 to 7 deletions. Just like uh, normal in Mastermind, when you click on an article, you'll be afforded a view into the sentence fragments that are appropriate to the CNV match for why this article was listed in this filter as well as prioritized. You can see immediately here how we've got a representation in the author's own hand of deletions in exons two through seven in the EGFR gene. You'll note here that there's a large number of articles, 226. And if you're interested in reviewing the content with some specificity in mind, as Steve suggested, you can enhance the specificity of your search by adding any one of a number of additional filters, diseases, phenotypes, therapies, other genes, specific gene variants, et cetera. What I'm inferring from some of these initial results is that glioblastoma multiforme patients are those who are most frequently afflicted with exons two through seven deletion in EGFR. If I wanna focus my search on just for, on just those patients, I can enter in a disease filter that specifically looks at the content that discusses glioblastoma. So when I do that, you'll notice that it takes my search results from 226 to 120 and is, again, a very focused view into the evidence associated with that specific disease. Where, if you, as I say, if you toggle through each of these references, you can um, be assured that this content is per pertinent to your specific search terms. One thing to point out here is, again, all of the sort capability in the article pane is still applicable. And so you can review the most recently cited information about these specific exon deletions in EGFR as they pertain to glioblastoma. Or you can toggle the, the sort by publication date to review the, the seminal papers, the first papers that describe those particular CNVs. So that was the first example, again, starting off sort of uh, small. I wanna draw your attention next to the fact that we don't just restrict ourselves to deletions, but obviously can focus our attention on specific exons at the onset in this search, as well as identifying not just deletion CNVs, but gain CNVs or insertion amplification events, such as I'm searching on here for ERBB2 or HER2 exon 20 insertions. So when I engage that from the dropdown after having searched, I'll remind you again that right now you're seeing about 9,000 references that have to do with um, uh, any CNVs, whether they're surrounding the searched for CNV, intersecting it, or contained within it. If you want to specifically look at the content that has only your exact CNV, you can make your toggle showcase just those references that mention your exon 20 insertion results, and that reduces your article burden to 55, all of which should have this target icon, as Steve described, indicating that your specific CNV search is contained within any one of these references. And then if I click on any one of those references, you'll be able to see immediately that yes, these papers talk to the ERBB2 exon 20 insertions. Similar to my first example, if you wanna enhance your search, this in this case, I'll enhance it by focusing on a specific therapy that I know to be uh, pertinent to ERBB2 amplifications. If I perform that search with the included filter, 
and click on any one of the papers, I'll just remind you that you can either focus your attention on those sentences that specifically mention that therapy, or otherwise go to the all uh, matches and review all of that information, the C and Bs and the therapy mentions in, in some detail. For those of you working on a smaller laptop, if this becomes confined where you're focusing your attention on the lower right, I'll, I'll uh, encourage you to explore the use of this focus view, which preserves your search, but gives you a little bit more room to review the information in the sentence fragments as well as the full uh, titles of each of these references. So that focus view can be toggled uh, between the full detail view is, is uh, the default search. So that's the second example where you know a specific exon deletion or gain that you'd like to search on. I'm gonna repeat a similar type of search to the first example for the third search, which is to say, looking for a specific gene deletion, but I'm gonna uh, put a different slant on the utility of that search. So in this case, I'm searching on deletion of the gene FEX, where again, by default, you're seeing a sort by the, the number of articles that mention that specific CNV or contained or surrounding CNVs. In this case, I'm gonna sort by the length of those CNVs, which has a similar effect where you see below in the sort order, the specific exact match of deletions effects, you can see all of the exon deletions pertinent to effects, all of their various ranges, which are obviously larger than any individual exon deletion. So that's just a, a landscape view. If you're not familiar with the nature of the C and Bs that plague your gene of interest, the search and mastermind at the gene level will afford you a view into any one of those specific searches. And you'll be able to click on any one of those and review the information from the one or five articles that talk about any one of those specific exon deletions. I showed you that in, in the result for EGFR deletions. And so, uh, on the flip side, I want to showcase uh, the benefit of having all of the surrounding CNVs to your specific search contained within your search uh, for a specific deleted gene. And in this case, I want to draw your attention to XP22, which has the majority of these uh, citations in the form of 491. When I click on that, I'll now change my focus to the XP22 deletions, and it allows me to draw your attention to the gene uh, presentation in the CNV diagram, which Steve alluded to earlier. Each of these genes now, as they're plotted here, reflect specific genes within that window, the XP22 band of the, the chromosome, and the number of times that they're each cited across all of the papers that mention these CNVs. Again, this is a, a large set of information. And if you want to focus your attention to, to identify within this region, any of the genes that might be informative of your patient's phenotype, where you may have had a chromosomal microarray result that indicated the deletion of this chromosomal band, if you have any phenotypic information that you'd like to include in your search, suppose this patient was found to have um, hypophosphatemia. I'd like to, to get a phenotype there. So hypophosphatemia. Now, if I include in my search this phenotypic information, I'll invite you to watch as the CNV diagram depicting genes of interest changes dramatically to showcase to the user who may not be aware what gene within that window is most recurrently associated with the phenotype hypophosphatemia. So clearly there's a dramatic reconfiguration of these results. This standout gene is a gene that's uh, predominantly across all those genes associated with the phenotype hypophosphatemia and when included in your search can really focus your energy on uh, identifying that gene as the causative gene within the XP22 window. So that's the, the great utility of the CNV diagram as it's configured now, is allowing you to see uh, it, with a keystroke what gene or genes are liable to be driver genes within your search for CNV window. 
For the fourth example, you'll permit me to capture um, these searches so that you don't have to listen to me type. But I'm, I'm uh, showcasing here how Mastermind allows you to search by specific chromosomal range. So you'll see here that I've typed in or copied and pasted in this case, but you could easily type in as well, chromosome and start and end positions with a gain or deletion. This is obviously extremely useful if you're re reading the results from a chromosomal microarray, which come out as um, probe ranges for uh, haploinsufficiency or amplifications in this case of chromosomal material across your patient sample. So this is a search capability that Mastermind allows you to, to execute and go right from your CMA workflow into the Mastermind CNV search. So let me execute this search and showcase some, some feature capabilities uh, in this scenario. So as Steve described, there are certain deterministic features which were, were true of the first three searches that I performed, which is to say you're more likely to find exact matches if you've searched on some known genetic entity like a gene or a gene exon. In this case, with a chromosomal microarray, you're far less likely to have an exact match, and that's exactly the, the benefit in this scenario of having Mastermind being able to show you both contained and surrounding CNVs as well. So in keeping with the search example of a chromosomal range, what I'd recommend to you, because you have a large number of results, in this case, 300 or so unique CNVs, all depicted here, small and very large, as well as about 2,000 references that contain CNVs with, with uh, bearing on the search for CNV window. In this scenario, it behooves the user to enhance the search, and you'll see how it enhances the search greatly, by including any of the attendant phenotypes that were found to be true in this patient's case. And so in this scenario, I'll execute a search with just two of the phenotypes that were true in the patient. I have to be sure I spell these correctly. So I'm searching on hydrocele testes and hypothyroidism as phenotypes. And I'll just leave the search here by default and, and illustrate a point, which is to say, when you perform a search with an and, it is maximally specific or restrictive. And so as I've executed the search in its current configuration with the phenotypes being an and, Boolean operator requires that both hydrocele and hypothyroidism or any of their synonyms be present in any one of those references. And very quickly, you can see that that yields no results. So I can rest assured that of all of those 300 CNVs and all of the some 2,000 papers that mention them, none of them talk about both of these phenotypes. But as, as uh, users familiar with this search uh, modality are aware, you're highly unlikely to find a paper that mentions all of your patient's phenotypes, you're much more likely to find some subset of your phenotypes uh, in and amongst the, the articles that would be relevant based on your, your patient's CNV. So I'm toggling to or, and then uh, searching again to illustrate that point of going from maximal specificity, which is highly restrictive, to casting a wider net and going now for, for more sensitive search. And again, I'll draw your attention to how these genes across these 24 CNVs and all of the references that cite them, how they're pointing out prospective genes that are likely to be the causative genes of any of the patients who are found to have any one of uh, your phenotypes of interest. In this case, it's OTX2. And one of the search results here uh, actually uh, calls out OTX2 in the case of a patient who has at least one of those phenotypes that were searched on, which in this case is hypothyroidism. So again, the, the point to illustrate there is that there's great benefit in adding phenotypes to your search using the Boolean operator or to help you understand what gene is likely to be a causative within that range, as well as to identify papers that mention CNVs 
that are, are pertinent to your specific search. In this case here is a duplication of a band on the long arm of chromosome 14 that actually spans two cytobands. I'll further characterize um, the benefit of adding phenotypes by illustrating that searchers are not restricted in their ability to add more and more phenotypes. And so this was a fairly complicated case. Uh, just to spare, spare you um, watching me type in all these, though it didn't take very long, you can type in all of your phenotypes, and I actually recommend that, because some of them uh, may be more rare and therefore more diagnostic than others, but including in your search all of the phenotypes pertinent to um, your patient, you will then be able to see in the search results any and all of the phenotypes in that paper, in this case, a, a large number of those phenotypes are mentioned in the context of this paper that also contains a C and V that's highly related to your original search. So again, I, I want you to be mindful of, of the ability that you have to search across multiple specific phenotypes. If you toggle to the OR, you're likely to see a number of references that are, are going to be informative for your specific search whether they contain an exact match in the case of uh, more prescribed searches or whether they're containing a highly related C and B match. I have uh, three more searches to, to go through and they illustrate uh, some of the additional flexibility in search uh, that you're, you're likely to encounter in your workflow. So in this case, as Steve mentioned, I'm searching on a specific cytoband. So this is likely to be useful if you do happen to have a CMA result that spans a band, or you, you have reason to believe that something is going on in that region in your patient, and you'd like to explore the literature to uncover information that you may not have, have been aware of before. So in this case, I'm searching on deletion Q, sorry, deletion 2Q22.3, executing my search from the dropdown, and then performing that generic search. I'll draw your attention to now the idea that the exact search is present, the exact CNB is mentioned in 52 papers, again, because this is a fairly proscribed search result. We're nevertheless showing all of the overlapping CNBs by default. If you'd like to focus your attention on specific uh, uh, matches of that exact CNV, you can do so by toggling to the exact CNV result. Uh, however, in this case, I'd like to cast as wide a net as possible and showcase all of the overlapping CNVs. And when, you, when you're peru perusing the titles and abstracts that match those search results, as I'm able best to do in the, in the focused view, you can see immediately how these papers, which I'll click on one, highlight Moat Wilson, as well as highlighting um, the, one of the specific genes that's associated with, with these diseases, which is to say ZEB2. So when I showcase the specific uh, results for a, a generic search of a cytoband, I'm able to immediately see what the likely disease or diseases are that are, are causative, uh, are, sorry, result from that specific CNV that you've performed a search on. So I'll, I'll repeat that search example type with a different cytoband and illustrate an additional point, which is to say searching now on deletion 17P11.2. When I perform that search, there we go. Um, suppose I'm aware of phenotypic features in my patient that are uh, related to a disease entity that I'm, I'm well aware of, which is in this case, um, Smith McGinnis in my example search. If I now enter in my disease as a search filter, I'll focus our attention on CNB results that also mention the disease Smith McGinnis somewhere in their results. And you'll notice that there's a couple of uh, genes that stick out within that window that I've searched on of the cytoband. If I'm interested in one of those in particular, which peaks out above the rest, uh, being reflected in about 400 of those articles, I can click on that gene and add the gene to my search result 
and further focus my attention on the information content that's pertinent to that specific gene. Then when I click on any one of these results, I can again corroborate the nature of the C and B deletion that I had searched on, in addition to showcasing the mentions of the gene, as well as the mentions of any specific genetic variant that may be listed in any one of those papers. And so in this case here, you've got a couple of specific uh, uh, gene deletions, pardon me, uh, gene mutations. So if I'm just interested in uh, highlighting one of those and including that variant in my search, Mastermind will allow you to do that just as, as it had done before. Now searching on the disease Smith-McGinnis, the gene and gene variant Q1389R and the CNV deletion that was uh, in our original search. And so this should uh, return maybe one or two of those articles, hopefully, certainly the, the one that I pulled that from, but now you can see how this Q1389 is mentioned in a handful of papers that also mention your specific CNV, which has obvious uh, utility if you've got, say, loss of heterozygosity and a missense variant in a, a putative causative gene uh, that, that is, is likely um, associated with your specific disease. So the last search that I wanna perform is the final search modality, which is to say allowing you in Mastermind to search on karyotypes. So I'm, I'm showcasing here, there's obviously uh, multiple different ways that karyotypes can be depicted. Uh, to illustrate the, the challenge that Steve and his development team faced, we had to understand the ISCN karyotype nomenclature and how to parse through it to uncover any of the CNVs that were latent within the nomenclature for a, a sometimes very complicated karyotype. And I'm just illustrating that with a, with a fairly simple karyotype here, where in this 47XY del 11Q23, you can see that our dropdown CNV has parsed out the del 11Q23 change and is showcasing that for the user to be uh, a meaningful search. And just like Steve said, that's the, the search time benefit of, of Mastermind's genomic language processing, being able to parse those karyotypes. But you obviously are afforded the benefit of uh, its indexing capability of pulling out karyotypes as well, which hitherto for had been an extreme challenge when searching through the literature using uh, exact methods like PubMed and Google Scholar. So Kate, I am amazed uh, that we have time left over for questions. Uh, um, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to, to field those questions and, and ask that Steve join me um, as we, we answer any of them that the audience has submitted. Sure, great. Thank you, Mark. I'll just take the screen back over if I can. Here we are. All right, so we did have some really great questions come in, and I will start with the first one here, and that is, how is exact defined? Uh, I can Mark answer or that. Steve wants to take that one? Probably Steve. Sure, I'll answer it. Um, so exact right now is defined as a uh, percentage of the size. So as, as you probably guessed um, by, by the fact that the question was asked, it's not just exactly this start nucleotide, exactly this end nucleotide. It is predicated on the length of the CNV that's being searched. I actually forget the exact percentage. It might be something, it's somewhere between like one and 5%, I think of the, the start and end position where that percentage is of the length of the CNV. So um, so the, the smaller your search, like if you're searching just a single exon, it's, a, a, it's pretty close to like being exact to that exon. Um, if you're searching, you know, something that's a hundred million uh, uh, base pairs long, then it's gonna be, you know, plus or minus maybe like 10,000 or something like that. I, I forget the exact percentage, but it is a percentage. Thank you. Another question, uh, I'll try to word this correctly. How did you solve the problem which is caused by change ref genome? Um, are, are you, is the question about, um, 
using like a GRCH 37 versus 38 mark, do you understand what they're asking? Uh, to be honest, Steve, I'm not exactly sure, but why don't, if, if you're aware of that problem that you cited, it, it's plausible that that's the same problem, but otherwise you and I can confer after uh, and, and address that specific user's question. But why don't you go ahead and answer the question that you know to be a challenge and you sure, and I I'll, can confer afterwards? I'll, I'll answer a question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were normalizing uh, C and V data on GRCH38. We do, as you uh, saw in the slide with the, the examples for different uh, nomenclatures for CNVs, we do recognize and normalize user input and also um, author citations for GRCH37 uh, when they or HG19 um, when they specify that that is the reference build that's being used or when you as a user specify that, we do recognize it. And we, uh, if you're searching by HG19 coordinates and you specify it in your search string, we lift that over to GRCH 38 coordinates to do the normalized search. Um, again, referencing the, the normalization I mentioned where we're normalizing the, the paper citations and we're normalizing the user input so that they meet in the middle and you know you're searching the right thing. So we do recognize uh, on either side of that um, HG 19 um, as well as, as uh, 38 and we normalize 238 by default, if not, if no build is uh, mentioned specifically or explicitly. Thank you. Another question. When you search CNVs in literature, do you perform reciprocal overlap or one-way overlap? And what is the overlap percent cutoff that you use? Great, yeah, great question. So we, um, sorry, I'm taking all of these. Do you wanna answer No, that's Mark? fine. Okay. No, no, that's fine, Steve. I mean, you're you're more in the guts. I'm I'm just the the pretty front end facing. <laughs> you, sure. you, you have all the the details. Yeah. So uh, uh, in the the um, screenshot and also in the the demos that Mark showed in the C and V diagram, we have a column for overlap, which is where we're indicating what type of overlap it is: exact, surrounding, uh, contained, or intersecting. Um, if you hover over those we actually do give the percent overlap and the number of overlapping base pairs or nucleotides. Um, that percent overlap is a reciprocal overlap calculation. So if it's a, if the C and V you're hovering over is contained within the search C and V, then it's the percentage of your search C and V covered by the contained C and V. If it is a surrounding C and V that you're hovering over uh, compared to your search C and V, then it's the percent of the surrounding CNV that your search CNV covers. And if they're intersecting, that is that reciprocal uh, overlap. It, it's the, the, the total percentage of the combined uh, uh, length. If you take the, the start position of the, the earlier starting CNV and the end position of the later ending CNV, and then you divide that by the number of, of overlapping base pairs, that's that percentage for the intersecting. So when you sort by overlapping, it doesn't do like an alphabetical sort based on the type where, you know, exact starts with E, so that's at the top, and then you get, you know, intersecting, <laughs> uh, or actually, I guess C, contained would be at the top in that case, since that starts with C, but it's not doing that. It's actually uh, sorting in descending order based on the reciprocal overlap, so exact will always be at the top because that is by definition 100% overlap. And then it goes down from there. So you might see intersecting uh, and contained interspersed with each other um, and, uh, or, and also with surrounding, depending on what that reciprocal overlap calculation is. And to answer the last part of that question, um, uh, it, it kind of goes along with uh, the, the earlier stated philosophy that, that Mark had um, mentioned, which is, uh, uh, trust but verify. So the idea being that we give you all of the evidence in order to be able to verify the results. And for that reason, we the cutoff for reciprocal overlap is 0%. We don't show any uh, CNVs that have 0% overlap, meaning not a single nucleotide. If it's even one nucleotide or base pair overlap, we include it. Um, now, of course, if you sort by the overlap column, those are going to be at the very bottom. So they're very easy to, to sort and focus your search on the, the higher um, uh, uh, the, the higher you, you, you teal evidence. 
Um, but we're, again, we try not to make a judgment call where you have to trust that we're showing you the relevant stuff. We're showing you everything that could be relevant basically. And then you can decide how to filter the results down. So even if, a, if there's a single uh, base pair overlap, we're including that CNV by default. Yeah, see, th thank you for that answer. I, there's no way I would have been able to articulate that, but that's a great question and something that Steve and his team had had thought of. And uh, I just didn't get to it in any of the demo examples, but the sorting by percent overlap will have that cascading reciprocal overlap calculation be the, the sort order. Very, very useful, good question, very useful feature in Mastermind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another question is, do you index articles based on legacy Exxon numbering as well as systematic versus custom Exxon numbering? This is an issue I have struggled with quite a bit in performing literature searches for CNVs. So legacy Exxon numbering as well as systematic versus custom Exxon numbering. Um, yeah, so my my um, my oversimplified answer would be uh, yes. My engineering uh, a precisely accurate answer would be sort of. Um, uh, we do we are aware of the challenges and we do try to address them, but it can often be, especially for legacy gene nomenclatures, it's something we have a lot of experience with um, for the the variant indexing that we do. For example, with IVS nomenclature and that sort of thing, where it's not necessarily exon numbering legacy issues, it's intron num uh, uh, numbering legacy issues, but it, it's still the same thing. Um, we do have you know, historical uh, transcript data to know where the, the um, exons start and end. By default for C and V search, so for variant searches, um, we do a lot of that nor uh, 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 um, normalization using all of the legacy transcripts. For C and V, we started with a more basic approach of essentially taking the longest transcript for a gene and using that to normalize the, the coordinates to GRCH38. Again, unless the author specified GRCH37 in their description. Um, but we, uh, again, take the longest transcript, normalize that to the reference build. Um, for most of the legacy issues, again, this is sort of a, a, a benefit that you get for free from the approach of, of starting with maximal sensitivity and showing you results for overlapping uh, C and Vs is that oftentimes even with those legacy issues and legacy uh, numbering issues, if you wanted to do a, a, a maximally sensitive search that you could be certain was not excluding data from shifted exons, you could do a search uh, as Mark demoed for searching for the, the deletion or amplification of the entire gene and then sorting uh, by the, the reciprocal overlap or by the size so that you can see what all exons were cited. And you can, you know, if it's, uh, if, if it's exon two today, but 10 years ago it was exon three, you can see the citations for both exon two and exon three so that you can be sure not to, that you're not missing those. You could even go as far as, um, again, if it's exon two today, but exon three 10 years ago, you could click exon three, you could then sort the article list by publication date and look for the old articles citing exon three if that was something you were, you were especially concerned about. Um, that's the way that, that we try to handle it today without getting uh, uh, overly complex or into the weeds is by making sure that we, uh, that you can find that data very easily. Um, if you have specific genes though, again, this is sort of going to my, my answer of sort of, if you have specific genes where you know that's been a problem that you face, please reach out to us and let us know because that is absolutely the thing that we're, we're constantly um, um, incorporating into our genomic language processing. So we do have a lot of those corrections for a lot of genes that uh, customers who are, uh, or users who are experts in those genes have reached out to us and let us know, hey, there's legacy shift issues with this gene that have never been reflected in the transcripts. They're just, uh, you know, they've been uh, commonly used by authors um, because they prefer this numbering or something like that. And, you know, for IVS nomenclature, it's things like authors 
don't like counting uh, introns within the five prime UTR. So all of the introns in this gene tend to be shifted by two because there's two introns in the five prime UTR. So if you have issues like that specific to your genes, please do reach out to us and let us know because we love uh, getting feedback like that that we can incorporate. All right, thanks. I think that's about all the time that we have for today. Thank you again, Mark and Steve, and for everyone for joining us. As I announced earlier, anyone who registered for this masterclass will receive an upgrade to the professional edition through October 31st. So you can try the CNV search and all the other great pro features. If you currently already have the basic edition, your account will be upgraded automatically by the end of the day, as long as you're registered for this webinar with your mastermind login email. If you registered with a different email, you can contact us at support at genomenon.com or hello at genomenon.com with your uh, email information. If you don't have a mastermind account yet, you can still take advantage of the upgrade by visiting the link you see here on the screen, which is the uh, bit.ly forward slash mastermind dash CNV. And if you have any questions about purchasing multiple seats for your lab or would like a guided trial of Mastermind Professional Edition for your whole team, email us at hello at genomenon.com and a member of our sales team will be in touch with you. And I know a lot of that information was a little confusing, so don't worry. We will have that all included in our follow-up email. Again, we thank you for joining us, and we hope you can join us for our next Mastermind Masterclass. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again.